Welcome back. Stage 16, excuse me, stage 17. Second to last, I always love the word penultimate mountain stage. <clears throat> this one was, it's been billed as the queen stage, which I finally learned the riders choose what they think is going to be the hardest stage and that's <clears throat> what they call the queen stage sorry I still have a little of this post nasal here and this stage it's very short they decided also to try a uh, just what is it uh, 65 kilometers instead of the normal 150 200 250 kilometer stages perhaps to see, to get the race to be just a vicious attack right from the start. They also tried something that just didn't make any sense to me, and if you understand cycling, which you would assume the organizers of the tour would understand. They did what they're calling a Grand Prix start, just like in NASCAR racing, you get a pole position, you know, the fastest riders are on the front, and, uh, the further back, except what they did was the further back you are in the GC, the further back you were in your starting position on the line. And now most stages start with a neutral start just to get the riders rolled out, get out of town, let the riders organize themselves. This started right as <clears throat> racing right away. Now a few riders did attack right off, but it quickly sorted itself out because this is a team sport and the riders that are a lot of the riders that are way down on GC are there because they go as hard as they can for their team and then they pop off the back and finish so it's not that they're not good riders it's just that they've expended a lot more energy in service of their team leaders so all this big foldera about this big stage and how it was going to be attacking right from the gun. Actually, the peloton gave the early break a good six, seven minutes. You know, now, now that we're hitting the, we're just hitting the base of the final climb. So they've got up the Col de Portet, uh, outside category, a haute category um, stage climb with just 10 miles excuse me 15 kilometers to go and they've really barely been in the cycle I mean and the bike were you know hour and a half into the stage so as always seemingly Team Sky have gained control little unusual the figure I'm drawing right now is the spider-like looking Chris Froome on the bike such a distinctive style he rides with his head down and his elbows out certainly not the most aerodynamic position on the bike but <laughs> you can't fault a guy when he's always winning although he has not taken the yellow jersey yet that's his teammate Garrett Thomas, and he's actually been quoted saying, you know, he's perfectly fine if he doesn't win it. I'm a little incredulous. I have a fan collector of my cycling work lives in California and sent me an email where Froome was saying, he's perfectly happy not to win. It's so thing. I'm kind of like, yeah, that might be bluffing. <laughs> you know, the, uh, what a great way to confuse the guy in third as to which one he should chase. Although, Tom Dumoulin is no dummy. He's basically said, I gotta watch them both, you know. As you would expect. So here they are. Now what's happening right now is this rider right here in the front is Dan Martin. Dan Martin's had some bad luck, but he's also won a stage. And he's the first to jump out of this uh, group. The previous climb, the team of AG2R, 
Roman Bardet, who sits in fifth, had tried to take the race to Team Sky. And then Movistar pulled one of their riders, Marc Soleil, Soler, back from the leading group to whip the pace up. Now Marc Soler, his team leader is Nairo Quintana, who right here is just launching his attack, which is kind of why I picked this image to do. We'll call this Here We Go. So, probably will never see this uh, Grand Prix start again since it had virtually no effect <clears throat> on what was happening, what happened. Oh, never mind. I was going to tighten the image in, but I think I'll wait till the end and see if I can give you a tight shot of the image at the very end. So, again, starting with the yellow. In this case, we're also going to start with the yellow jersey right here on the shoulders of Garant Thomas. Now, just behind on these two edges are riders from Lotto Jumbo NL or Lotto NL Jumbo. Lotto NL Jumbo, yes. Um, who also have yellow sleeves on their jerseys. There was a team way back, Anse, whose kit was yellow. Um, but in the tour, because their jersey was bright yellow, they couldn't wear the yellow jersey, so they switched to pink. I actually like the pink jersey better. I think I've kind of let you all know I'm rather fond of the color pink. So now we're doing the flesh tones. I always like to get this flesh one because again it's my um, next lightest color in the color scheme of the warm colors. But I like to get that in because it helps me find all the figures, find the guys. And I've always talked about guys in this, and of course these are men racing. But there is a pro women's peloton. And there's actually, and I will do a painting or two before this is over, I promise. <clears throat> there is a group of oh, about nine women, it's a team, who are riding every stage of the Tour de France a day ahead. As a way to say, look, women can do this too. In fact, Oftentimes, I find women cycling much more exciting. It's a little more wide open, a little gutsier racing, a little less formulaic. Maybe it's just because I am Team Sky does the same thing in every race. Grind it all out. Shockingly enough, that's the only red in, that I can see in the peloton. So, Nairo Quintana, this racer here just attacking, and has had some bad luck early, which put him, I don't want that color, with the bright blue of his jersey, has put him. Well, just not having the race he wanted, you know, you, right off the bat you lose a few minutes, <clears throat> then you're in trouble, and then he didn't have the best stages in the um, Alps either. Well, here comes one of my big dogs. Don't know if you'll see him walk by. Seba. Hi, Seba. Catch your baby. It's walking around with a stuffed toy in his mouth. All right. Moby Star has this nice 
bright blue, dark blue kit. It used to be all dark blue. They switched to this kit. You know, they really need to start consulting me about their kits so I can tell them how to get it all color coordinated for my benefit. What do you think? <clears throat> think they'll do it? Think they care what I think? So this is UIE Team Emirates that this Irishman rides for. One of the um, Arabic sponsored teams. It was a little cool to see these Arabian teams riding in the Giro when they were in Jerusalem. Oops, I'm not picking the right colors today. I actually ended up painting the Giro d'Italia because <clears throat> I was intrigued that the race started in Jerusalem and ended basically at the gates of the Vatican. It seemed like the history of religion. Like I said, they had Arab, Muslim country teams racing along the Israel, racing through Israel, so it was sort of all three of the major Western religions were represented geographically. I must say I miss the bright blue stripes of the sky helmets. Again, a chromatic thing. It's funny, I used to gripe about their um, so this is Froome right there. Yeah, can't you tell? And then his shepherding teammates. But up here, slightly up ahead, and it looks like Froome might be dropping off. We'll see how that plays out. Is Garrett Thomas, the race leader. Remains to be seen if he'll be the race leader at the end of the day. So. If you're not following closely at this point, <clears throat> Garrett Thomas is leading the race by a minute 39 seconds over his teammate Chris Froome, and then just, I think it's a 14, 11 seconds behind that is Tom Dumoulin in third place. And then we drop down, I forget exactly who's in which position after that, but as I recall here, Dan Martin is in 10th place, and of the big GC guys, he's the furthest back, and he's only, I think it's three and a half, four minutes back. <clears throat> now it is admittedly a short climb they have left but given its severity it's the kind of stage where somebody cracks they could lose four or five minutes so it's worth the effort to attack to see you can gain either gain back, move yourself back up on GC, general classification, take advantage of other people cracking, see how you can change your luck, your position. So this is just the first moments in this, what they expected this to be fought out quite a bit by now. And like I say, it really hasn't been. Put some of the shadows in here, which I think really add a little drama to the imagery.
I always like when I'm riding, <clears throat> I always feel, when I look at my own shadow, I look like a crab, arms out, head down, looks a lot like a crab on the road. So these works are all for sale, every single painting I'm doing. I think this one is 89, but every stage, I think the least I've painted is four images in a stage. But they are all, so I write a blog post, theartofcycling.blogspot.com, and I will include that in the description. And then post a link to, on that blog to where you can purchase the artwork. Hi, Belle. Here comes the next dog. So the camera just got hit. Sorry about that. But, and then, so on the blog, sorry, I got distracted there by the dogs. You will see um, a direct link to purchase each painting. And I'll get these paintings up today, probably about 3, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, maybe a little later. And uh, hopefully you'll purchase them. And the website, by the way, is, the, uh, is gregleach.com. Unusual spelling, G-R-E-I-G-L-E-A-C-H. Fortuitous that my parents gave me an unusual spelling. <clears throat> Road color was a little too dark. Let's see if I can stretch it out with a little water. So it's going to be exciting to see if something really happens from this little move that Dan Martin and Quintana are doing. So just a little more detail in the sparsely vegetated slope behind the riders. All right, I'm going to go for a little zoom in here. So there's today's painting. Really nice camera work, huh? Hope you enjoy watching and that you'll continue to check out the stuff at the blog and we'll come back tomorrow.